Uh, Hall of Fame will be uh, increased by another uh, member, and to uh, introduce them to us is a dear friend of the WJPZ uh, Alumni Association. She is the head, let me make sure I get this right here. You're the head of the Tennessee Democratic Party. You're a super delegate. Super delegate. You control <laughs> democracy south of Oneonta. You just run the <laughs> So make sure you get on her good side because she will be running the country uh, come November. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, how about a roll round of applause for Mary Mancini. <laughs>
It was very different. WJPD a year later could be heard throughout Syracuse on cable TV. Which, it doesn't, it may not sound like much, but I gotta tell you, it gave us actual listeners. The phones started ringing. And not only that, but it boosted and reinvigorated the morale of the staff who for too long had been doing air shifts at all hours of the day and night with no signal, with no listeners. He also, at the end of that year, had found us a home in Watson Hall and new equipment. Okay, it was new to us. <laughs> but it was new equipment, and he found that equipment to fill the now new station in Watson. WJPZ Incorporated was established. Uh, WJPZ Incorporated was established, that, and that created the entity and established its independent, WJPZ's independence from SU. He secured funding. Uh, an expensive frequency search was commissioned and paid for, and an available frequency on the FM dial was found. And as his final act as general manager, before he handed over the reins to Mark Humble, and transitioned into the chair of the WJPZ, sorry, the first chair of the WJPZ Radio Inc. Board of Directors. He prepared, wrote, finalized, and submitted the completed FM frequency application for w Radio, WJPZ Radio Inc. to the FCC. I think this bears repeating. Bob Lynch's work as general manager, as his, sorry, as his work as general manager, he prepared the frequency search and the preparation and submission of the FCC license for WJPZ FM, which led the FCC to grant its first ever license to a student owned and operated station. See, he's extraordinary. This morning we heard from Alex and Tex that um, this year, 31 years later, from when we went on the air, uh, as an as a FM station with 100 watts, the signal is going to be increased to 1,000 watts. With that knowledge, it's even more fitting that this year, the year that Z89 increases its signal tenfold, we honor and thank the person who guided through sheer will, determination, and knowledge of how you know radio actually worked. He guided WJPZ to 100 watts on the FM dial. Boy, I screwed that one up. Anyway, thank you, Bob, <laughs> so much for everything that you've done. And it is with my great honor that I induct you into the WJPZ Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Z89 family, our latest Hall of Famer, Mr. Bob Flint.
been 30 whatever years. Can I still, I still have to say allegedly? Uh, <laughs> putting up antennas that perhaps may have resulted inadvertently and unintentionally in some roof damage that you've heard about already. <laughs> Maybe, perhaps. <laughs> so Mary you know, told the story, so I won't do that again. But in, in the fall of 83, she referenced the license application. This is a copy of the actual construction permit application from October of 1983 that we submitted. That became WJPCFM. So it was, a, it was a lot of folks besides me. I, I, when Mary said Bob, she should have said we. Because it was people like Mark Humble, who's over there, Eric Fitch, who I don't know if he's here yet, but he's coming. Hey. Um, you know, without. Mark and Eric and Mark Illenbogen and Chris Mossman and other people uh, who I'm not you know, naming at the moment, this never would have happened. So uh, I know that. And you all are hopefully grateful to them as well as for me. Eric's already in the Hall of Fame. I hope Mark and Mark Illenbogen both can get in. People like Joe Pasternak that came before me. Uh, it, it is a continuum. And I guess that's maybe what I want to talk about, not so much of, of what happened back in the day. So, but I will start with a back in the day moment. Um, I had the opportunity to come to campus this past fall, and Rachel, my friend Rachel, showed me the station. Rachel, what was the first thing I looked for? Uh, a plaque. Yeah. Okay, so I looked for a plaque that was in the memory of a guy named Matt Wasser. Matt was somebody we went to school with, and, and um, so we hear a lot about, and, and even tonight, there's a lot of people in this room who have done amazing things in communications and started at JPZ. And that's one of the coolest things about JPZ. But what's also cool is that, in some ways, we're a misfit of island or island of misfit toys. That you could be the rock star and be here, but you can be someone that may never ever do anything in radio, and it's cool. You can be here. And I was talking with Greg this morning, and um, you know, it's kind of it was a sentiment they shared back then, and I know that's the sentiment that continues now. So Matt gave his heart and soul to JPZ and cared about the station, and he died in a horrible accident up in Day Hall. It was the first year we were in Watson, and he really, to us, represented the epitome of that kind of kid who really just cared about JPZ, whether or not they were a great broadcaster. So we dedicated the new studio at that time to him, and I'm very pleased to say that plaque is still there. So the next time you go there, you see the plaques on the wall on the left. Take a look at that and just think about that for a moment. Um, you know, Jeff made the comment about the friends you, you make here, and uh, I'll echo that as well for the people that are sitting at that table and, and people that are not here and have been a part of my life for over 30, 35 years. Uh, I'm blessed for that. I'm grateful for that. And it's that humanity that's a really a, a part of what makes us a continuum. I think Steve used the word love earlier. I'll use the word humanity. There's obviously a lot of talent, which I just alluded to. But there's a lot of passion, too. People in this room obviously care about this radio station and cared about it back in Greg's day. They cared about it in our day. They cared about it in Jeff's day. They care about it now. And you should have seen the room light up this morning at the alumni meeting when uh, the boys were talking about boosting the power, boosting it to 1,000 watts. You could see the wheels turning. <laughs> and it was really interesting to see, all right, how can we promote this? What does this mean? How can we increase the ratings? Is this something the students really want or are the alumni driving it? We all said those things because we care, and that's unique. It's, a, it's part of this, this wonderful alchemy that makes this journey possible for WJPZ. And so a long time ago, my shout out to Professor Rick Wright was that you made a comment in class once, and I'll paraphrase. And by the way, an aside, back in our day, the padlock was this big. <laughs> I hear it's gotten bigger since. <laughs> so, uh, but you said something about a lot of people can be on the radio, but not everyone can be a broadcaster. So I would contend, because of our humanity, because of our passion, and yeah, because of our talent, the folks that came before us, I know us, and the people that came after us and the current students are all broadcasters. And whether it's carrier current, or amplitude modulation, or frequency modulation, or cable audio, or streaming, or goodness knows what comes next, WJPZ will always train broadcasters in the greatest, greatest media classroom in the world. So I am grateful for this honor, and I think I'm even more grateful that I had the opportunity to play a part in a small chapter in a journey that is still continuing. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, newest Hall of Famer. The child Flint smiles. A solid 12 seconds. A solid 12 seconds of love and support for her father. What is her name? Susan. Susan, please, for the love of the Lord and all that's holy, be kind to this man. We love him. He, his stories are interesting and funny. He's a good man. 